uh, uh, welcome again in one of our sessions about evidence-based practice. As we said before, we define what is evidence-based practice, and we said that in order to apply principles of evidence-based medicine to a clinical position, you have to go through five steps, the five A's. So the first step, you have to ask a clinical question. So we will learn today what is the difference between foreground and background information. Because, as we will know that, evidence-based medicine is, 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 is what is related to foreground information. Then we will identify the four elements for well-formulated questions. We call them PQ, P for patient, I for intervention, C for, for comparison, and O for outcome. And then we will, then we will describe the importance of a well-formulated questions, and we will learn how to build a peak of questions from different scenario during the small group activity. So let's start by giving a case study. If you imagine that you are working in the emergency department, at 11.30 you have a lady who presented with facial and neck swelling after hair dying gesture. When you see such a case, you will have a lot of questions in your head about such, about her problem. So you will recognize she has an angioedema and you need to manage her airway. So should, should you try to intubate her or you go for surgical airway? This is a question. You may have another question. You have another question. For example, shall we give her adrenaline, hydrocortisone, antihistamine? Can we give her antihistamine uh, first? Adrenaline should be intramuscular or subcutaneous. And may, you may have a junior person with you, for example, a medical student who will start to ask, what's her problem? What's angioedema? What's anaphylaxis? What's the pathophysiology of anaphylaxis? So as you say, uh, as you noticed, a single case can give you a number of questions and information. And we divide those questions and information into two types. Either background questions, which is our questions that is related to general knowledge about the condition, the root, the disease itself, for example, the mode of action of drug, for example, the pathology and pathophysiology. And if you want to ask about those questions, and if you want to ask about those questions, you need to go back for a medical, for a medical textbook. Another type of questions, it is foreground questions. Those are questions which addresses a specific knowledge gap that you need those knowledge to inform a clinical decisions or actions. Those are questions related to therapy, prevention, diagnosis, and prognosis. So if you go back and remember our patient who presented with angioedema, if you are asking about how can we manage her airway, is it, uh, shall we go for intubation or surgical airway, this is foreground question. If you are asking about how we can give uh, adrenaline, IM or subcutaneous, this is foreground question. But if you are asking about what is the possible physiology of anaphylaxis? What is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction? This is background questions. And if you want to ask about foreground questions, it is better to use what is called PQ format. So the P for patient, I for intervention, C for comparison, O for outcome. And actually, as you are getting more expert, from being undergraduate to postgraduate to practitioner, you will have a lot of foreground questions with the less need for background questions. And that is why you will need to know the principles of evidence-based practice as, uh, as you are getting more and more ex expert. So why it's important to use the PICO format? Using PICO format will focus your learning time on evidence that is relevant to the patient clinical need and knowledge need. For example, instead of searching for anaphylaxis, 
how to manage, you will just search, for example, about shall we can give adrenaline subcutaneous or I am. So your question is focused. You will, you will not waste a lot of time. You will be focused and you will learn what you need to manage the patient problem. And it will help in searching as we'll use that in practical sessions on literature search. The first step before we start to decide to search, you have to have a clear questions with the clear keywords that will help you to search. And help you to communicate more clearly with your colleague. What are the components of clinical questions? It include P, which is the patient situation or population or product of interest. I is the intervention, and when we are talking about diagnosis, prognosis, etiology, we used to say exposure. C, comparison, if you want to compare two things. And O is the outcome of interest with the time horizon, if it is related. Any question? So this is the end of our second second. Thank you very much. I'll see you in another session.